Hey y'all, Austin's Animals here. I'm back and I'm in uh, full regalia, my ridiculous outfit. So this must be a special occasion, right? Well, I just kind of put something together that would fit uh, a Robin Hood action figure. I love Robin Hood. Not just the fairy folk tale of Robin Hood, but Disney's Robin Hood, the animal adaption of it. I mean, no surprise there, right? If you've been watching this channel, you know I review uh, anthropomorphic and uh, humanoid animal action figures. So today we're going to be looking at a really cool one, the Super 7 Robin Hood Prince John figure. But before we look at it, a bit of an interesting story behind this figure. If you'll recall, th this line was announced, what, three years ago now? Four years ago? God, I think it might have been like like right when the, when the pandemic started, uh, Super 7 was like, we're making Disney figures, and they revealed uh, uh, Mickey Sorcerer uh, from like Fantasia, and Prince John from Robin Hood. And I thought, wow, that's a really cool figure, but it was expensive, and I'm not going to buy that unless they're making Robin Hood. And that's something a lot of these toy companies do. It happens so many times where they get a great license or line, and they, they mess up the first wave, and you never get the character you want. Well, the Prince John pre-orders opened up, and the figure has kind of stuck around. I think you can still order the figure if you want to. But about a year later, they announced the Robin Hood figure. The amazing-looking Robin Hood Super 7 figure. That, when it came, it went up for pre-order uh, for about a week uh, last summer. And it sold out very quickly. And uh, I was... Uh, very humbly surprised to receive that figure as a birthday present for my father. He bought it for me. Thanks, Dad. That's a cool gift. That's a great figure. Uh, you know, I kind of got a... He printed out a photo of it and said he ordered it, and I'll, I'll get it when it arrives. Well, over a year has passed, and I have still not received that figure. And I'm thinking, is this toy ever coming? And from what I gather on the internet, and we all know the internet never lies... <laughs> that no one has this figure. It is not shipped yet. There are no Super 7 Robin Hoods out there. He is as mythical as a Sasquatch at this point. But what we can get is the Prince John figure. So, full year passes. It's my birthday again. And I, I got some very nice items. Some things I'll talk about on this channel. I'm blessed to have amazing family and friends. And uh, my dad, you know, he says, I got one last nice gift for you. And he hands me this. And I'm thinking, is this the Robin Hood Robin? Like, did, did it arrive? Maybe he held it back for the nether birthday? I'm like, I don't know. But then I look here and I'm like, wait a second. This is Prince John. So, uh, uh, pretty pretty funny. Uh, Dad, if you're watching this, that you were a another birthday went by and you were able to buy the second figure in the line before the title character has even shipped. Now... I don't blame you at all. I'm actually very humbled that you bought me both these figures because I, I, I typically don't buy new action figures. It's it's too expensive. I buy things secondhand. I bargain shop. If you watch this channel, you know the flea market uh, haul videos, thrifting haul videos. I don't like paying full price, but in the case of these figures, they're very limited. And if you don't order them, you miss out. And if you didn't buy that Robin Hood figure... The five days it was available last summer, you're not going to get it. And that kind of sucks. It really does. Because there's plenty of Prince John to go around. I think he's still for sale. And if you look at the quality of this figure in person, and not just the digital renders, you're going to be blown away by the quality of it. So, cracking open the box here, we get some uh, very nice, beautiful, shiny packaging that kind of emulates... Prince John's crown. And then this top piece comes off, and there is our action figure. Beautiful rendition of Prince John. Uh, there's something I love about hard plastic action figures in soft good clothing. It's It kind of makes, it blends the line between an action figure and a doll, and I'm okay with that for a premium product. Uh, you know, this isn't something you're going to find at Target for $25. This is a high-end, online-only figure sold at a specialty market. It's not something you're going to um, see at retail. These aren't available at any big-box store. 
And I don't know if that's due to um, licensing, maybe, because, uh, you know, I, I know a lot of companies make Disney figures, so maybe that's part of the deal with these, is they can't go to stores. For whatever reason, these are made in very limited runs. So if you see a character you like, I think you should just double down and buy it, because you're not going to find him secondhand. Having said that, uh, I was listening to Super 7's uh, podcast they were doing. I think it was with Foosh. They were on Foosh. Good podcast. Uh, but they were talking about how Prince John isn't selling that well uh, because Robin Hood wasn't available. Or well, even today, there's no Little John or Maid Marian, and that people expect a full set. And I kind of uh, uh, agree with the... I'm on the consumer at this point. I get that Super 7 is trying to make an anthology line where there's one figure from each Disney movie, but I don't know if Disney collecting works like that. I know there are people that like Disney parks and Disney attractions, and in that case, I think an anthology line works because you could have one Pirates of the Caribbean figure, one Haunted Mansion figure. You could even do the Fantasia Mickey, right? Because he's from the Fantasmic show. But in the case of genre movies like this, I don't think it will work. Like, me, for example, I love cartoon anthropomorphic animals. I think Robin Hood is one of the best animated movies ever made. I absolutely love this film. And I would buy every character in this size if they make them. If they make Maid Marian, Little John, heck, Friar Tuck, uh, make the rhinoceros and elephant guards, just make everyone. I'd buy them all. But I'm not going to buy the Mad Hatter or Alice or some of the other uh, bizarre choices in the line. So... I, I think they said going forward they're going to do themed waves and stop with the anthology selection because it's not working. And if that's the case, that's the right direction to go. Also, I have to mentally prepare myself that a Robin Hood wave might be coming, and that means we would get four Robin Hood figures, and I'd go into debt. I mean, I couldn't help myself. I have to have them. Could you imagine how gorgeous a Maid Marian in this would be? I mean, I love Prince John. Prince John is an awesome villain, but a Maid Marian in this line would be, like, top-tier action figure. No joke. One of the best figures ever made. I could picture it in my head, and it's gorgeous. But Prince John's an awesome Disney villain. Uh, he is cruel and evil and also funny and ridiculed at the same time. He's the perfect, like, classic mustache-twizzling melodrama villain where the character's they don't really take him seriously. They make him into an absolute joke, but they do that because he's so evil and cruel to the, the people of Nottingham. He, he taxes the heck out of them. He's the, the king of taxes, and I think uh, being overtaxed is something a lot of us can relate to. I mean, oh my goodness, have you seen the prices lately? Try living in uh, California, Los Angeles, the sales tax. Oh my god, through the roof. That was Prince John. Maybe he could he could take a tip or two from Los Angeles. But uh, th this is a great figure. Oh, and there's, there's some irony right there. The sales tax on these can be pretty high for those collectors living in California. There's something ironic about being taxed high on a Robin Hood action figure. I don't know. But still, you know, buy it from Super 7 and totally support them. Because this is a great line and I'd love to see it continue. But let's talk about the figure itself now. Because I'm an opener. And I'm going to crack open this figure. I don't care. Uh, first, we'll look at the back. It kind of contains a description about Prince John with a photo. And I'll read it here. It says, uh, Occupying his brother's throne during his absence, Prince John is now the self-absorbed and money-hungry ruler of England. Through ruthless and wicked means, including his beloved taxes on the poor, he will stop at nothing to ensure his lion's share of the wealth. That is, unless the cunning Robin Hood has anything to do with it. So, you know, it's just a very basic box, and I'm so okay with that because these figures are so detailed and come with so many pieces that they are meant to be open. These are not for the carded collector. They don't even have a tab where you would hang them on the wall, and I like that. If this had come on a big, beautiful card back with, like, stunning artwork of the character, I would have had that temptation, you know, do I open it or do I not? Uh, those who collect Super 7's products might know they produce some of the best packaging in the business. Gorgeous packaging that you don't want to open any of their figures. And, and I like opening my toys. So 
Thank you for making mediocre looking packaging so that I can open this. Still, the presentation is nice. I, I, I threw it over there, but you know, it had that big crown. So good unboxing experience. But now we're gonna, with the magic of editing, we're gonna hard cut to an open Prince John. And Prince John is open. And my first impressions are that it is a decent figure. He is solid. It's nicely made. Um, the construction is really nice. This doesn't feel at all like a NECA figure or even some of uh, some of the more mediocre McFarlane figures where they just kind of snap at a whim. No, this, this figure can definitely be displayed nicely, posed, dare I even say played with. It, it, it kind of feels a bit toyetic. And uh, I, have, I have by comparison here, uh, <laughs> if anyone remembers the ill-fated Funko Fantastic Mr. Fox line, uh, it comes to mind because it was a similar line that was packaged and sold as an Ultimates collector line that was high-end. Uh, but these ones, they kind of have that matte texture and the joints are all stiff where I'm so scared to pose this guy because I feel like he's going to snap in two. But Prince John here has that wonderful plastic shine that toys should have. He feels solid and complete. The construction is all ball joints, so he has tons of movement, and none of the joints were stiff. Uh, that was shocking. Uh, everything comes nicely posed. You don't have to, you don't have to dip him in hot water or put him in front of a hair dryer or any of that nonsense that seems to come with toy collecting nowadays. Uh, the, this this kind of feels like something that you would have seen in the late '90s or 2000s, uh, like. You know, playing Mantis, they, they made a bunch of this great stuff with their uh, Rudolph and P Peter Cottontail figures that were just fantastic. So uh, that's solid, and the sculpting and paint is top-notch. I like that the crown has a bit of a... Uh, it's not necessarily vac-metalized. I would have definitely preferred that, but it does have a sheen to it that the rest of the plastic... You can't really see it well in the camera, but trust me, in person... The crown and the meal uh, glimmers. So it kind of adds to that royal effect. Speaking of royal, the robe is really nicely made. And it does a great job of covering some of the joints in the hands. Uh, if you see here, he does have his sculpted kind of pajama outfit if you want to display him in that. But, I mean, why wouldn't you display him in his fantastic robe? I did see some people online complaining that... He is in the red robe seen in the intro and promotional artwork when for most, if not all of the movie, he is in a blue robe. So it's not the screen accurate robe, but I think for a display piece and as a toy, this is the better choice. It just pops. Something about that red and gold really stands out on a shelf, whereas the blue would have just blended in with the pajamas. I mean, when they animated the movie... I know why they did one solid color for the pajamas and robe. It's, it's cheap. They were saving money with Robin Hood. There's tons of <laughs> reused and cost-saving measures in that film. But designing a toy is different than making a movie. And you have to think, well, yeah, yes, it has to look like the movie, obviously. But it also has to be a good toy that stands on a, a shelf or is part of a display environment. And that's something that Super 7 seems to really know. Like, you know, McFarlane makes nice collector figures. NECA makes terrible collector figures. Super 7 makes great toys. They seem to understand the toy market. And I would love to see them make a, a, a kid's line. Seriously, I think Super 7 should try a kid's line. I think they would do fantastic. They would, they would knock Hasbro and Mattel out of the ring. It, it's a shame that these aren't at retail because... Uh, I bet a lot of kids would love these toys, especially since, you know, Robin Hood these days, uh, despite being a near 40-year-old movie, seems to only be picking up in popularity due to uh, streaming and the internet. Now, as an amazing bonus, we get Saw Hiss, which is basically his own action figure. Now, if you don't think Saw Hiss is not the best character in Robin Hood, well, it's time to rewatch the movie. I mean, he's amazing. You know, he, he gets drunk. He's, he thinks he's the smarter of the two. I mean, him and, and, and Prince John are like an amazing power couple, let's be honest. And we get two. We get two Sohisses. There's the regular one 
the just, you know, basic, nice, friendly, so hiss. And then there's so hiss being choked. So if you want to replace the meal with so hiss, he can kind of uh, yell and shout at him. Now, some of the promotional pictures for this figure uh, made it look like so hiss was articulated because they didn't have these two next to each other. They, they, they kind of insinuated that it was a, a figure with a, a bendable, flexible torso, like he was made of rubber. Uh, I'm kind of sad that isn't the case. I love bendy figures, and a bendy saw his figure would have been the best thing ever. But I understand that he's totally a bonus, and they could have just sold this on its own without saw his, and it would have been fine. So he's an amazing addition and adds a lot of value. And again, the, these are expensive figures, so it, it helps it out. Um, now, talking about padding out the value, that's where some of these heads and hands come in. So you get the happy and angry heads, which are nice. And then you get this one where the crown has kind of fallen on his head. This one looks a little goofy. I get that it's a scene from the movie, but I can't imagine anyone displaying it with this. Also, the happy head that's pictured here, this is the only head with a removable crown. And boy, is it removable. It seems to fall off every time I try to switch to hands. It doesn't stay on very well. So if you want a crown that stays on, you're going to have to use the angry head. So th that's that. And then the hands, th there's a lot of different hands. You get all the different uh, combinations of rings. Because if you remember, when Robin Hood dresses up as the gypsy, he robs him of the jewels. So there he is, like, you know, he shows off the rings he has, and then Robin Hood robs them, and they're empty. So that's a nice fan service detail for the fans. But again, not really necessary. I mean, are you going to really display him? with the wings or without like why wouldn't you just use the hand that's in a holding position since he has such awesome accessories also uh, there is no figure of a gypsy robin hood which is a shame because i that would have looked great like i so would have put the goofy head and the empty wings without the giant diamonds in them if they had made a gypsy robin hood uh, but that's not the case they are making robin hood in his archer's outfit from the middle of the movie when he's in the shooting range competition. Not a bad choice, but yeah, I would have preferred the the gypsy version. It's just such a fun costume. But yeah, no, this is a solid figure. Uh, if I had any complaint at all, and this might just be my sample, this could not be indicative of them all. And, and again, this is something that's common with uh, action figures that use soft goods, is that the red of the robe is rubbing off on the figure already. So you can see there's a bit of red there where the robe was put over in the packaging. Um, it's not really going to bother me because I'm going to display him with the robe on always, so you're not even going to see that. Um, but if they continue, and now he's having trouble standing, there we go. But if they continue to use soft goods that heavily, then I worry that it, it might affect some of the figures that have more important features. Like, for example, that Robin Hood figure from his archer's competition, he comes with a big poncho over him. And in that case, I'm not always going to display Robin Hood with that poncho. But if that poncho rubs off on the green tunic, then, oh my god, I'm going to be furious. Like, <laughs> I don't want the tunic ruined. I mean, I'd even put it on Robin Hood because of that. So, in this case, I'm going to let it slide that it rubs off on the figure. Because who wants to display Prince John in just his pajamas? That's boring. He's got to be in the full rope. But uh, as an action figure, he absolutely succeeds. Uh, even the hands. Uh, uh, before I was rolling the camera, I popped off one of the hands because he comes with this... Uh, it's the open hand. He's got the open hand in the packaging. And I just before the, the cup hand so he can hold things. And it popped off with no problem at all. Now, I've done hand pops on NECA figures where I'm like so nervous and scared that the figure's going to snap. So... Uh, good job, Super 7. You made an adult collector action figure that feels like a toy, that doesn't feel like some sort of fancy high-end statue with joints added to it. So uh, that's really nice. Uh, the real test is going to be Robin Hood. I mean, after a year of waiting for that figure and, you know, being the titular character of the movie, all they're going to nail Robin Hood because as awesome as Prince John is, he is a supplement to Robin Hood. I, I don't know why you would buy this figure on its own without buying the other. So, still a solid figure, fun to have. I love that they they took a risk and they made this line, 
And yes, this line is a risk, despite being a Disney action figure line, because as much as Disney sells Mickey and Elsa, there is no Robin Hood stuff to buy. There's not a lot to collect. Not as much as you'd think for a Disney movie. It's a very limited pool of toys. So I love that they're giving this license some appreciation and shining a light on it. And I hope Super 7 continues to push the envelope and make six-inch animated cartoon action figures. I know they were also doing the, the Animaniacs. Those looked pretty decent. And then I think they're also doing Simpsons. Uh, like Red and Stimpy for the three people that want those. Oh, oh, don't fall. Uh-oh. See, he's falling there. There goes his crown. Uh, but yeah, I hope they keep up the good work. And I hope Robin Hood passes the test. Because that's, that's going to be it. If that Robin Hood figure isn't like the most amazing thing, I'm going to have some reservations on this line. Uh, but so far, looking good. So check it out. Uh, this figure is still available. Pick him up while you can because he will disappear. And then you'll have to pay a lot of money. And not just in taxes. Do it. Do it, sire. Do it.